What's the difference between developers who will always remain well-intentioned code monkeys and those developers who get paid the best, work with the best, and have a chance to work on projects that have impact? Well, we find out it is not about how many languages you know or your Harvard degree. Sorry, Dad. It was overpriced. It turns out it's about being a skilled problem solver. We talked to developers about that today on XD Developers TV. What are the distinguishing features of the top 2% of developers? What qualities do they have that the rest don't? Now, although many of them disagreed, there was one quality that came up more than any other. It can best be described as learning how to learn. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know exactly what you're saying. I can hear you. You're saying, Jace, what the bleep does that mean? When you have a technical problem, you have no idea how to solve. And all the people in the room who are smarter than you have never dealt with it either. That's when the great ones get to work, methodically finding a path to a solution without derailing the project's timeline. To do that, you need to be able to break down difficult, unexpected problems and get it back on track. Listen to Alan Paulin of Google say it like it is. I don't think there's any one set of training or experience or language that you, you know or don't know that, that I can say is, you know, you need this for Google. Google's really about what, what you can do for it in terms of or, uh, your thinking, in, in your line of thinking. And if you can prove that, that, that you're smart, that you can solve problems, then we know you can learn about agile technologies. We know you can learn a new language. We know you can learn a new platform like Android, perhaps. Um, the, there's, the sky's the limit as long as you can prove that you can learn. You know, it's, it's domain knowledge versus process knowledge, right? You can either memorize everything in the world or you can figure out how to figure out how things work. And if you can have a process style view of a problem, um, then that can really help you learn something, right? Like usually the, the, the smart people, the smart problem solvers I know, know how to look at a problem and break it down and say, okay, right, this is supposed to do this, but it does that. What happens if I do this? Okay, you know, sort of like the science, it's just like the scientific method, you know, and they start ruling out things. Um, and the, as they're doing their research, as they rule out stuff, you know, they take copious notes, they, you know, they look at the problem so that when uh, another experienced person is there, um, you can say, okay, you know, this foo is supposed to do bar, but it's not. I've ruled out these four things. I'm missing something, you know? Um, and that's how, when I watch programmers work, that's how they work. They just kind of um, learn to ask, to learn off of each other, I guess. is. is I think one of the biggest trends is away from the idea of hiring specialists who are really good at a particular technology and moving more towards hiring people who are really good at problem solving and learning new technologies. So if you're, if you're a junior, actually, rather than trying to say, I'm an expert at this one thing, or I, you know, I've done these five different little projects all in C++, for example, you'd be much better off saying, hey, I've done five different projects in five different languages because it demonstrates that you're willing to learn new things. So I think that's a really big trend, and that is driven in part by the widespread adoption of agile methods, because continuous improvement and learning and cross-training are really big parts of those methods. Even really smart students, they might take their first class in programming and be able to solve everything pretty much in their head. They get the idea of how they're going to solve it, and they figure it out before they write it down, before they um, divide the problem up into smaller problems. But then when they hit problems that are bigger and more complex, that they can't solve it completely in their head and just sit down and write the solution, that's the second kind of dip that you have or learning challenge that a lot of students have, is how do I take a complex problem and break it up into smaller problems and see how the smaller problems or solutions work together to make the big solution. That I think is the second big challenge that, that students uh, that students hit. And that's where there are techniques for helping you do that. You just have to listen to them. I think that a lot of times we're lazy 
and we just want to take the quick route. And we think the quick route is just bang out the solution, you know, just um, hammer it out. But that doesn't always work. We need to divide the problem up carefully and think about it before we start writing the solution. You know, all the textbooks in the world will not make you, will not magically turn you into someone who can write a lot of high quality code. The only way to write a lot of high quality code is to write a lot of low quality code first. Uh, and eventually, right, you will, you will get to a place where you appreciate the stuff that you can write yourself and you actually think that it's good. Um, Ira Glass has, a, has an amazing bit where he talks about how there is this gap where you know what you like, you know what you appreciate, you have taste, but you have no capacity to live up to that taste, right? Everything that you make looks like garbage to you. It looks terrible, right? Because you've refined your taste and you're now only beginning to get into the development of it. So, uh, you know, if I could go back and tell myself, you know, look, you're going to go through a rough path. Right after you start doing something, you're going to totally suck at it. And that everyone goes through. There's not a single developer that I know who has been effective and amazing right out of the gate. It's a struggle, and you have to struggle, and you have to want it. But it pays off. You get through it. You get over it. You start to make things that you can really be proud of, things that you can show other people. And so, you know, everybody says stick to it, and, I, and I'm just going to keep echoing that. You, you, know, you will get better, but you can't be afraid of failure. You have to keep trying. Thank <laughs> you.